Hi, I'm Jen Grimes. I'm a visual communication specialist and owner of Nectar Design. Today, I'm going to talk to you about three different motivational frameworks. The first is Csikszentmihalyi's flow theory. The second is DC and Ryan's self-determination theory. And the third is Keller's ARCS model of motivation. We're going to look at how all these are a little bit different, and then we're going to look at how they overlap. And then last, we're going to discuss the implications of these frameworks when designing educational games. So first, there's flow theory. So flow theory is based on achieving optimal experiences. Optimal experiences, as defined by Csikszentmihalyi, is when a person is so engrossed in what they're doing that nothing else seems to matter. There's no attention left for other problems, your self-consciousness disappears, and your sense of time is distorted. So how does one get into these optimal experiences or flow states? Well, first you need to look at how challenging a task is compared to one's skill level of the task. If a task is not very challenging and your skill level is high, it's probably going to be pretty boring. Now, if the task is very challenging and your skill level is pretty low, it's probably going to produce some anxiety. So the balance between this challenge and the skill and boredom and anxiety, that's your flow state. Next, we're going to look at self-determination theory. Now, DC and Ryan propose that motivation is based on three basic psychological needs. The first is competence. That's when you feel effective and competent in relation to whatever you're doing. The second is relatedness. And that's when you feel cared for, you care for others. You basically have a sense of belonging and feeling connected to others. And the last is autonomy. And that's being self-directed. You're making your own choices and having control over your actions. Now, in this theory, autonomy is broken down into separate motivational categories with differing levels of autonomy. First, we've got intrinsic motivation, then extrinsic motivation, and then a motivation. Extrinsic motivation is broken down into four discrete categories. First, we have external motivation, and that is when you're behaving in ways to obtain a reward or avoid punishment. The next is introjected motivation, and that's when you're behaving in ways to impress others or to avoid guilt. The third is identified motivation, and that's when you're identifying meaningful outcomes, which means you might not enjoy the activity, but you really value the outcome. And the fourth is integrated motivation, where outcomes are deeply integrated into the sense of self. Now, these last two, identified motivation and integrated motivation, are both very positive when it comes to extrinsic motivation. The last framework we're going to look at is the ARCS model of motivation. Now, Dr. John Keller synthesized many different motivational theories and then categorized these theories to create a holistic and integrated model, the ARCS model. And the ARCS model, A-R-C-S, the first is attention. And that's asking how to get and sustain the learner's attention. And it's a prerequisite for learning. Next is relevance. So how is the content relevant to the learner? The third is confidence. How does the learner have high or low confidence with the subject matter? Do they fear failure? And the last is satisfaction. So do the learners feel good about their accomplishments? Now, what's great about this model is the model itself gives a lot of practical strategies to achieve motivation in those four different areas. With the ARCS model of motivation, Keller emphasizes that front-end analysis is key to uncovering motivational problems that need to be solved. Now, when we look at these three different frameworks together as a whole, we definitely start to see some overlap. The first that came to mind was boredom and attention. So we have boredom in the flow state and attention in the ARCS model. And both of these deal with pulling the learner in and keeping them engaged. Next, if we look across the board, in flow state we have challenge, in ARCS we have confidence, and in self-determination theory we have competence. And all of these 
deal with taking on appropriately harder tasks. We also have within all three of them skill, confidence, and competence, and all of these deal with mastering skills. We also have in flow state anxiety, ARCs model, relevance, and self-determination theory, relatedness. Now, anxiety, relevance, and relatedness, those all deal with self-esteem, and especially how one might appear to others. There are also a couple that deal with personal choice. If we're looking at relevance in the ARCs model and autonomy in the self-determination theory. And we also have a few that deal specifically with these intrinsic and extrinsic rewards of achieving goals. If you're looking at the satisfaction in the ARCs model and autonomy in the self-determination model. So what are the implications on how these frameworks might impact educational game design? Well, there's a lot of different tactics to consider, particularly with the amount of overlap that we've just seen. If we take it model by model and start with flow, some tactics we might want to think about are paying attention to skill levels and introduce progressively harder levels as we go along. With self-determination theory, we might want to look at incorporating lots of choices for the learner. We want to make elements customizable. We want to give learners a feeling of mastery with levels and points earned. We also want to let the learner get connected to a larger group through competition with peers, leaderboards, group play, or teams. Now with the ARCs model, under attention, we're going to want to grab attention with sensory or cognitive curiosity. We might want to use open worlds so learners can explore or puzzles to solve for a sense of inquiry. We might want to vary scenes and tasks, or we might want to use humor. To add a sense of relevance, we might want to use lots of choices in what learners do and where to go. We may also want to build a game on a common platform to tap into the learner's prior experiences in gaming. To help with confidence, we might want to use level ups, or we might want to have tutorials for a low stakes practice. And for a sense of satisfaction, using badges or leaderboards, using natural consequences for negative reinforcement, larger rewards for harder tasks, and giving positive affirmations with sounds or graphics could also work. Now these three models, flow theory, self-determination theory, and the ARCs model of motivation. They all offer many different ways to motivate and engage learners. And as we saw, there is a lot of overlaps between the three theories, particularly in the challenge, confidence, and competence sectors. And strategies like progressively more challenging levels, scoring, rewards, tutorials, and personal choice all tap into these motivational frameworks. <laughs>